Chris, big star, big league. Expecting back is live. Over the loudspeakers and Chris waltzes in. So. Well, I license other music. <laughs> now. Um, on the media call the other day, you said if somebody asked you about something, that you would go into things more in depth on it. And it was heavily insinuated throughout the call, uh, based on media reports as well, that there may have been potential contract tampering or allegations of such. Uh, here's me asking about that further. Is there any comment that you would like to provide on that based on the media reports? I'm not, I can't say what happened between anybody. I'm just, uh, you know, the, all that you may have heard, uh, you know, I can't really comment on it. I think uh, what the wrestlers and what the talent and the staff and the people here come and say to us is between me and them. And now here is arguably the greatest pro wrestler of them all. Thank you, sir. Great. Hey, guys. What's up? How are you doing? Good. Nice. Look, I'm in the zoo. Oh, you. Me? Pittsburgh okay. Penguins. I didn't have the having a mic, but that's okay. Dominic D'Angelo at freeshows.com. Chris, it's pretty awesome to see you, Lionheart, back. Uh, I've, you know, grown up a WCW kid and stuff. It's been pretty neat to see you anyways. I thought, how was it kind of adjusting to the style that Brian Danielson brings and uh, kind of getting to, you know, kind of reclaim that kind of look? And well, it's funny that it took 32 years for Brian Danielson and I to have a spotlight pay-per-view match. It's unbelievable when you think about it. I was thinking, when did this happen last? This is when I had a match with Undertaker, the first match we ever had after I'd been in WWE for 10 years. And I was like, how did it fucking take so long for us to get, and we only had one match, never had a pay-per-view or anything. Uh, same with Brian tonight. It's just, I really, really enjoyed this match because it reminded me of the matches I used to have with Eddie and Chris and Dean and all. Back in the day, you didn't call anything. You know, you just went out and wrestled. You just wrestled each other. And to do that tonight was so much fun because there's only a few guys you can do that with. You know, and Brian is one of them, obviously. So, you know, and, and Lionheart, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a fun gimmick, and it's, but it's, it's still me, right? And it's just using all of the stuff that I kind of forgot about, you know what I mean? And, it, you know, it, it was just so much fun and just a, a, a fucking wrestling match, and I just liked that, you know? It, really, it was really, really a, a, a special one for me. Cool, thank you. Sorry, make this quick and like, can you go next? Okay, well, thank you. Uh, Nick Houseman Wrestling Inc. Um, there was, I asked Tony about this earlier this week, but there was the mandatory backstage talent meeting that Tony confirmed happened. Uh, reportedly, you spoke at that meeting, Chris. I was just wondering if you could tell us what you said to the roster and you know what kind of advice you're giving to talent and management right now at this period in AEW. You know, I mean, the specifics don't need to be discussed, even though you can read them online, and that was one of the things that was discussed. Don't leak shit that's supposed to be private amongst us. But I think that I, my message always is to remind people how special AEW is. And don't take that for granted, you know, like swearing and that sort of thing. Like all it takes is the wrong guy to see somebody say pussy or whatever the hell it is, and they're gonna go, done. It happens, we know this. So just, I always wanna remind guys that please don't uh, <laughs> ruin or potentially ruin this amazing world that we've created. We don't want guys going into business for themselves. We, we don't, and we or can't. Girls. You know, and, and where I came from, working for Vince for 20 years, that was unacceptable, it would never happen. And I'm just trying to let people know that we're getting to the point now where these types of things are unacceptable as well. And we will start you know, doing things that Tony would do if in the NFL or in, in with Fulham. And we are a pro sports, multi-million dollar company with a huge television contract with another huge television contract coming up soon. So a lot of guys don't have that experience and don't realize just how special this is. So that's what I try and do whenever we have these types of meetings. And I have them, and Tony has them. We used to have a lot more, but now it's a little more frequent. Just to remind guys, stay, stay, stay on course. Guys and girls, you know what I mean. Steven Milhausen with The Zone, Chris, great match tonight. And you were talking about you know, Eddie and Dean and Chris and why, and where does Brian rank among those guys in terms of now being in the ring? Well, I mean, I don't think there's such a thing as a bad Brian Danielson match. Um, and I don't really rank guys against each other because everybody's unique. Either you're good or you're not. And then Brian is beyond good, obviously. He's, he's, he's one in a million. 
And you know, the moment he came into AW a year ago, right? I was like, man, one of these days we gotta have a match. But to me, it's always the story that counts first. You know, you can put together a match, but if it's not a proper story, then it, what's the point? And we just started with Jarek Appreciation Society and, and Blackpool Combat Club and Anarchy in the Arena. That finish of Anarchy in the Arena, of, of Jake and I choking Brian out, was planting the seeds for a Jake and Brian match and for a Jericho Brian match. And that was three months ago, whatever it was. We knew we were gonna do this at some point and get to it. And we did. And, and, and the thing about it is that, like, I don't think it's, it's one and done. There, there will be more. And the Danny Garcia thing just kind of, once again, organically happened and became this really cool twist to the story and very intriguing. We don't know for sure what's gonna happen with that. Um, you know, but we have to tune in on Wednesday to see the next step of it. So. Um, yeah, it was just, it was, it, it, Brian's one of the best, he really is, and, and, and the fact that I got to actually experience that once again, the last time I, I felt this way is when I worked with Taker for the first time, and just went like, where the fuck have you been all my life, man, like, you know, I wish we had tours where we worked, used to do 14 shows in a row, I could do that with Brian, you know, in many different ways, so it was just a, a real pleasure. Dave! Hey Chris, how are you? Good to see you guys, man. Good to see you too. So, when it comes to the mentality of reinvent, you know, you're reinventing yourself all the time, because you have to do. You've been in the business for a long time and you have to keep things fresh. How did the Lionheart idea come in? I mean, in the it's, sense of, I mean, you did it before, but to go back to something that, it's almost like you're going back 25 years in your career. Yeah. I mean. Did it just pop into your head one day, or was well, it something? So it's yeah. an interesting story. So we uh, built up a match with, with Jericho and Mox at Quake by the Lake for the title. Um, and prior to that, I was just finishing up with Eddie Kingston, and also Moxley was involved as well. But we did Anarchy in the Arena, and we did Blood and Guts, and then we did Barbed Wire Everywhere. And I remember Mox at one point going, well, we need some kind of a gimmick. Like, we, we've done too many gimmicks. Like, why don't we just have a fucking wrestling match? And he was, yeah, I like that. And then he texts me during the week. Mox is a man of few words, unless he's excited, in which case he'll talk your ear off. And he said, I got this idea. What do you think? I remember I was in London for my spoken word show. And he's like, I got this idea. Why don't I say, like, leave all the bullshit behind, leave the JS behind. I want the guy that I used to tape trade to see, that I watched ECW in Japan, the Super Jacob, Lionheart, Chris Jericho. At first I was like, well, that's interesting. Because I'm not a guy who likes the nostalgia. But I was like, that's really cool, it's almost like I had just done the pain maker with barbed wire everywhere. Why can't we do Lionheart? That's actually really, really cool and Tony loved it as well. So then I had the vest and then I went, I have a storage unit where I looked through boxes of stuff and I found the kick pads, those original kick pads, I could not find the tights. But I thought if Kiss was gonna go on tour and wear their costumes from 1977, they wouldn't wear the exact costumes, they get new ones made. So that's what we did, we got new ones made. We found the, the White Zombie song, Electric Head, which was my ECW theme. And it all kind of just fell together. And the first one was such a huge success. And that's when, because I was like, this is great. This is, I'll probably not do it again, but Tony loved it. Oh. And he's now we're building a whole story around it. I love it. And it's, it, once again, it fits in with the heel Jericho, almost delusion, I'm better than that, found the fountain of youth. I'm better than ever. I have the best wrestler in the world. Like I can say that stuff as a heel, because it's so funny. When I lose a match, it's a great match. When I win, oh, 51-year-old Jericho's burying the young guys. <laughs> you know, so, like, so I can kind of use that. I bet I found the final of Of course I beat Brian Dennis. I'm the best wrestler in the world. So there's, there's, that intrigues me as well because it's that little kernel of truth that I always like as a heel that you can just overblow to where people are like, shut the fuck up already, man. You know, like I really am having, we talked about this, maybe the best year of my career ever as far as star ratings and just great matches. And like you pointed out, in different styles of matches different too. Styles, yeah. So let's use that to our advantage, that be hiding behind it. Like it's pretty fucking cool. It's been a great year. So let's continue that. It's great. And, and also to, just to add a little bit more color to it. So I loved it. When I heard about it, when uh, Chris and John, when I talked to them both, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. And then coming out of it, it was so special. Uh, the Quake by the Lake was a huge success, and the company's really heated up since then. You know, we were talking box office, and I'm sure I'll talk numbers and stuff when Chris isn't here, but Chris is a big numbers guy. 
and the company is doing you know some some of our best numbers we've had this incredibly hot run with chris and john here and now we're as hot as we've been you know the consistency we had through the summer with with chris jericho and john moxley is top featured guys on television i think of them as almost like the sting and rick flair of this company guys that have been there from the beginning that i can always count on and that'll be associated forever with as the first two champions of the company and then the way the stability they brought through the summer but then to tip it off and have such exciting things quake by the lake the great championship match punk comes back and have all the exciting stuff the place is going wild but then uh something we've been excited about for doing so long danielson versus jericho and the lionheart thing the day after quake by the lake they showed that side by side did everybody see the side by side of Jericho in 96 and in 2022? I mentioned this to Dave last night, uh, but for everybody, I was there in 1996 when that photo was taken and I was, how old are you? 12. So I was just a year older than you. I was 13 years old and my dad took me to the ECW arena. I was actually here in the state of Illinois. I got into the University of Illinois Laboratory High School. They tricked me because they said, if you take the exam, you don't have to go, you just have to prove that you can do it. So a bunch of my friends from school were actually here, people I grew up with who were at the show tonight with my dad. And they, they tricked me, because then I, I passed the exam, I got the 99.9 percent on this exam, and it's like, well now you're going, you have to. And I was like, what? That's a bait and switch, if I've ever seen one. I said, yeah, well, you can do anything. You can do anything if you want. So I was a little, a little, I was your age, and I got to go and see him. Do you know what they chanted when Chris left? At, they chanted, you sold out. And Chris was the biggest young baby face wrestler in the world, in my opinion, was the best young professional wrestler on the planet. And I was holding a sign that literally said, Chris Jericho is the best wrestler in the world. <laughs> and I had another I had another sign, you know what it said? Shane Hart's Sean. Uh, but that's another story. <laughs> and uh, and uh, <laughs> Shane it's, Hart's it's, Sean. It's funny though, like it, the match, the, my final match at ECW Arena was against Two Cold Scorpio. And the finish was a shooting star press and he came down and, and he was, so agile, he was a big guy, probably 240. He came down with his elbow right on my eye, and I had a giant black eye. When that finish happens, if you pause it, you can see a young Tony Khan in the crowd with his dad, Shad. Can you imagine Shad Khan? This fucking brilliant billionaire walking into the ECW arena in 96. I'm thinking, what have I gotten myself into? He's a man of his word, is what he is. He's a man of his word. And then this was the intermission, we went to intermission, and, uh, I went up to people in the front row and I was near tears. And I was like, and you know, there's like a lot of English football fans that it's a great example of. And I think there's people in England who are fans of the NFL this is a great example of. Sometimes you're a fan of a team and it's like your heart and soul and you breathe it and sleep it, but you've never even been to one of the games before. There's like people here who feel like that about, there's Fulham fans or fans of a lot of the English teams and vice versa. There's people in England who've never been to an NFL game in America before, although they might come to some in, in London. But, uh, so it was my first time in the ECW arena, but I felt like I'd been there a hundred times because I watched it and I walked up to people and I go, uh, they were like, what are you so sad about? And I go, it's Jericho. We got the best wrestler in the world here. <laughs> and they chanted, you sold out of him. And he's going to WCW. Let me ask you, who would ever want to come wrestle in front of us now? And I was like, oh, like I'd been there a hundred times. And, and but, but that photo was taken, Chris looked as good as he ever has. And honestly, a lot of the guys, when they saw that photo, they all said the same thing. I think Chris looks better now, which is crazy to think. And he's as good as he's been, like he said. I mean, you look at the numbers, don't lie again. Like, this is as good a year as you ever have had, according to, according to Dave, at least. And, uh, and I, I think, you know, uh, Mox was right when you came out of the ring. Mox said that's, he's wrestled you a lot of times, but he thought you're better than you've ever been. That was the best match yeah, he's ever seen you have. And tonight is incredible. Lionheart's taking it to another level, and I, it's only the beginning, so I'm really excited. Uh, last two questions, Abe and Elise. Abe Tanner, Rock 95.5. Have you guys considered doing a Fozzie show after a live Rampage? When you do a live Rampage show, because those are short shows. We used to do that early on in Fozzie, but it's hard. It's, it's hard to do. You know, you can't do both at the same time. I mean, I could do both. Like when we tour, we tour five days on and Tuesdays and Wednesdays are off to do Dynamite. And sometimes I'll miss a Dynamite when we're on tour. But doing the show, uh, the, the, the Fozzie show after uh, a rest, AEW show would be very hard for me because it's two separate mentalities, you know what I mean? So I can't even imagine trying to do this. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, yeah, it'd be very hard. Chris and Denise Salcedo from Instinct Culture. So I wanted to ask you, given your history with MJF, what did you think of his return tonight? I loved it. I was not expecting, like I, I knew he was here, but I was not expecting what, uh, what I saw and I thought that's really really cool now the thing is I worked with MJF for a year and I know how creative he is and how good he is so it doesn't surprise me what surprised me the most is that we got sympathy for the devil by the Rolling Stones and I'm like okay 
That's some money for sure. White zombie electric head, that's a certain level. You'd be surprised. I would be surprised. <laughs> I, I know that we asked for Van Halen uh, at one point and they wanted like a million or some ridiculous thing and ACDC wouldn't even call us back. So the stones are much uh, cooler and, and <laughs> cheaper apparently. Uh, or maybe not that cheap, but either way, I just Well, they played our stadium, former TIA. That's right, that's right, that's right. So I, I thought it was, it, it doesn't surprise me at all, even though I was pleasantly surprised at, at how he did it. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, of MGF, I really am. And I said to him, when you come back, you're going to be a baby face. And he's like, I don't want to be a baby face, I don't want to be a baby face. I said, it's, it's going to happen. And he's like, I don't know what to do. I said, I'm sure The Rock said the same thing, or Steve Austin said the same thing. You can do a baby face comeback, I'll teach you, it's easy. <laughs> Getting, uh, it's easy, it's easier to make people hate you than it is to make them like you. But once they start hating you, that's when they really start liking you. And he's almost at that point. That's my prediction. I think he'll be one of our top baby faces, whether he wants to be or not, very, very soon. A game changer. That's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you.